Animations really add that special flash and touch in an app, and it really enhances the user experience. And in this lesson, we are going to dive into the Core Animation API directly, and we're going to learn how to use keyframe animations and combine them together and add them to an animation group so that you can create a custom animation of yourself that's composed of smaller animations or different animations inside of the group. And this tutorial is actually a uh, continuation of a keyframe animation series that I'm starting. So if you haven't seen part one, make sure you check that out. It dives into more of the uh, UI kit version of how to do more of a blocks based approach. Um, but this is going to be actually using uh, and constructing animations directly. So let's open up Xcode and get started. So this lesson picks up where the other iOS keyframe animation lesson left off. We're going to still be doing a lot of the same things, but we're going to be building our keyframe animations using core animation directly instead of using the UI kit blocks based API that we did last time. So we'll be achieving similar results, but you'll get to see how to actually construct these animations manually and how we can use them uh, in conjunction with an animation group. So this is going to be in an Xcode playground. So you can go ahead and create one and get set up. And if you want to pause the screen right now, uh, you can add in the code that I have here. And this is just the code to get set up and just center a view um, in a view controller. And we'll start working from here. If you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, I'll link a card up above and you can go and check that out. But really, so what, what we're going to do here is um, to get set up, we, we have our code here for loading our view and, and positioning it. So we'll create another function, uh, maybe right down here, and we'll call that function um, trigger animations. And we'll just call that right at the end of view did layout sub views. Now, just a disclaimer here, when you are kind of modeling and prototyping this code, positioning things and calling things from view to layout subviews might not necessarily be applicable for your app. So keep that in mind for where you see me actually setting this up. I'm doing this in the playground for a demonstration. Um, so you might not want to do it exactly the same way, but the core of this tutorial is going to be on actually the animations themselves, which you can apply anywhere in your app. So just keep that in mind as we go through these things. But um, so let's get started and we'll go and construct our first animation and then we'll talk about it a little bit and kind of see how it works. From part one, we implemented a lot of UIView.animate keyframes uh, blocks, right? And we did individual animations inside of these blocks and kind of went through all the UI kit uh, methods and APIs and so um, and that works and that's fine um, but you know there's a more manual approach actually animating the layers themselves so um, you don't really have to know too much about core animation to do these kinds of things but um, now that we're diving into this more we want to take a look at what a CA layer is because really this is the underlying thing that we're animating um, when we're performing these animations so looking at the documentation um, you know, it's pretty simple, an object that manages image-based content and allows you to perform animations on that content. But really, um, I think the best ex explanation is right here. It's the backing store for views, but it can also be used without a view to display content. And the main job of a layer is to manage the visual content that you provide, but the layer itself has visual attributes that can be set, such as background color, so on and so forth. And when we go back to Xcode and we look at something like the view, for example, view to animate, right, dot layer, you can see that it has a layer. And uh, we can command click and jump to definition and see that, okay, you know, every Every view comes equipped with the layer, and uh, if we command click on CA layer, we can see here um, some of the documentation for what it is and kind of the different things we can do with it and kind of read up on it and see, you know, there's things like bounds, position, Z position, anchor point, lots of the things that we're used to seeing on UI views. And so as we create these animations, we're going to be applying these animations to the layer of the view. And let's just get started with a really basic one so you can kind of understand how all of this triggers in. So we can start with doing an animation for the background color, changing this from blue to any number of different colors, uh, doing a keyframe animation. And so what that looks like is something like this. We start off with defining a keyframe animation. So color keyframe animation 
which is a CA keyframe animation. And CA stands for core animation. Um, that's why they call everything with a, or start everything with a CA. And we'll use the um, key path initializer here. And so this is the string. And if you remember, there are animatable properties that we can run animations on. So background color would be the one we want to use here. And we have to define it like this. And at this point, um, what we can do here is use a couple properties from this. So if we command click into CA keyframe animation and read up about it, um, where is it in here? CA keyframe, there we go. Um, we have, we can see that it derives from a property animation, which is uh, another base class. Um, there are things such as values, key times, a path, timing functions, and a few other things here that you can you can read up on and use, but we're mainly going to be using the values and the key times for our animations in this tutorial. But let's go back here and start filling these in. So for our color keyframe animation dot values, it's a collection you can see, and it's a collection of any. It's an optional collection. What I'm going to do here is supply it with a few different colors. So I'm going to start off with UI color dot purple dot CG color. UI color dot blue, or actually no, it's already blue. We'll do red dot CG color and UI color dot orange dot CG color. And we're going to basically animate between these three different colors in an animation cycle. And we'll also do something like this um, color keyframe animation dot key times equals an array of what. So uh, key times is going to be when a certain animation might start. It's always governed between the values of 0 and 1. So if I say, you know, I have a 10 second animation and I want to start it at, um, I don't know, the halfway mark, I'm going to use 0 0.5 for the value in key times because that's right in the middle between 0 and 1 and that would be from you know 0 through 10, that'd be right at 5 or the middle of, of the animation block that's running. So um, what we can do here is you know add some values there so we can say okay you know we want these animations to trigger from I don't know 0 to 0 0.25 do something dot 25 um, maybe at 0 0.75 do something else and so the next thing we need to do is actually add in an animation duration right so how long is this animation going to occur uh, I can say it's going to occur for maybe four seconds right um, I can say something like I want it to auto reverse so it completes this cycle and then it undoes what it did um, I could do a repeat count if I wanted to, but um, color keyframe animation that repeat count maybe equals three, right? And so we're we're all set at this point. So what we can do is add this animation to the layer. So view to animate dot layer dot add, and you can see here there's a CA animation and then a key. But the key is just the name of the animation. If you want to subscribe to delegate methods and know what animation finished, but I don't care about that right now, so I'm going to pass it nil. Um, so color keyframe animation and nil for the key and let's see what this looks like and so you see here that it's kind of animating through the colors um, it's going from blue to purple to orange let me speed it up that's a little bit slow we'll do it maybe over one second so it's a little bit faster you can see though it's animating through the colors um, and that's 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 the basic idea for um, how to apply an animation. So let's continue forward and um, go through a few different other animations. So let's try doing the position.x or the animating across the x-axis just to see. So similarly we can create a um, let position or let's call it horizontal position equals a CA keyframe for a key and this one's going to be called position.x um, and what I'm going to do here is for the values horizontal position dot values we'll go ahead and define that as 0 to 100 for the timings we'll do horizontal 
position animation dot timings. I'm sorry, key times. And let's see what would be a good value for that. Um, we can do from zero to maybe 0 0.3. And there's one other property we're going to add, and that's horizontal position animation dot is additive equals true. Animate layer dot add. Uh, the horizontal position animation for key nil. And uh, I do need to set a duration on this. We'll, we'll bump this up maybe to three for all of them. And horizontal position animation dot duration equals three. Um, horizontal position animation dot auto reverses equals true and um, we'll give it a repeat count of three. Now you can see this is kind of starting to get a little repetitive, right? I mean, you're always having to keep defining these values over and over and over. And I'll show you how we can use a group to eliminate a lot of this repetition, but let's see what it looks like. So there it goes. And it's, it should go back because auto reverse is set and goes again and it'll go back. But you can see here that I'm, I'm, I'm constantly doing, you know, I'm adding two animations. I am repeating code, repeat count, auto reverses. I mean, yeah, I could create a function and do some things to streamline this and just pass in parameters and so on, and that would help. But what we can also take advantage of is something known as a CA animation group. So rather than having to do a lot of these things over and over, I can create a group like this. So animation group. And on the group, I can set the, du the duration. So that means this is the master time um, for you know these animations to run in. So I'm going to set it to four seconds. Just give it a little bit more time. Um, I can also say the group is going to have the property of dot auto reverses set to true. The group is, could also have the repeat count to whatever number I want. And actually, if you want to make this um, repeat indefinitely, or infinitely basically, you can do something like this. You can do float dot greatest finite magnitude. And that basically says run my animations forever. Um, and then the last thing here, let's see, we've got auto reverses set, um, repeat count duration. We need to actually define the animations that the group's gonna have. So animation group dot animations equals an array of animations. And what we'll do here is we'll pass in the horizontal I think my uh, playground is consuming a little too much power here. Let me put that on manual run. Horizontal position animation and color keyframe animation, like that. And then instead of adding these individual animations, we'll just add the group. So we can do view to animate dot layer dot add animation group uh, for key pass and nil. And um, that lets us not have to repeat things like repeat count, auto reverses, and duration on the animations. We can just set the values and the times because we've already defined this on the group itself. So let me remove that. Let's run it again as a group and see what it looks like. And it should look exactly the same. It's just everything's running in a group. Now, I also don't need that duration on the color keyframe animation because I forgot I set that on the group. Um, so let's add another one. Let's try doing the horizontal one here. I'm going to remove the is additive. I'm going to change the key to opacity. And all I'll need to set now are the times and the values. So for the opacity, we're going to do a fade in. So um, for a fade in, we're going to want it to go between 0 and 1, 1.0. Uh, for the times, um, I think we can do 0 to maybe 6.5. So that means that at 65% of whatever 4 seconds is, whatever that time is, the fade in will be complete. Um, and let me just call this opacity or fade in. And I'll just change the name here. And then we'll add it to the group. So we'll come back to here. 
and do the fade in as part of that array of animations. And we'll run it now and we should see uh, that fade in occur and then everything else that's in that group execute as well. Now let's go back and, and then the fade out because auto reverse is set to true. So again, um, let's continue forward and add a few more. So we've done, um, or we did position.x, uh, we can do position.y uh, and move it across the y-axis. So, uh-oh, uh, oh, there we go. Looks like my playground was about to go haywire. So position.y. And um, for this one, I think I'll use 0 to 100. So basically move 100 uh, down on the y-axis for the times. Um, I'll do it starting at 0 0.6. And we'll take that all the way up to 1.0. Um, and is additive, I'm going to set that to true here, which means, again, um, <clears throat> we'll call this position.y or vertical position. Vertical position there and there. And um, vertical position dot is additive. And again, that just means that from wherever the view is, um, because it's centered currently in the playground, that it should move down 100 points from the center because um, it's relative. It's basically relative to where it is um, at the start of the animation. So um, do vertical position as part of that and run this again and let's watch it. Goes down, goes back up and auto reverses. So if I commented out that whole vertical position here, um, we can observe what it looks like. and see how it's going from up there, because it thinks it's from zero to 100. So we've done position.x and y. How about transform scale and rotation, just, just for the heck of it? Um, so I'm just do a grab fade, or the opacity one. We'll just reuse that. We'll, we'll redub that as um, transform.scale. And we'll just call this scale, and rename the variables here and here. For the values, um, hmm. I'll do, a, we'll start off at one, which means full scale. We'll scale down to 0 0.1 or 10% of the original scale, and we'll scale back up to 1.0. We'll do this from 0 0.6 to one. So basically kind of towards the end of the animation to 1.0, it's going to scale down and scale up real fast. And, um, before we do, so we can add that to the group. Um, so we go down here and add the scale animation to our array of animations. And then for the final one, we'll just do the um, rotation one. So that's real simple. It's just transform.rotation. And all we'll need to do is just change the key times and the values. Uh, I will try, for the values is a little different here because it's not just it's going to be doing something like rotate it by pi. Um, so I'm going to do 0 to pi. It's going to be our rotation, or just one complete rotation of uh, this square. Um, I'm going to do from 0 0.6 to 1 as well. So it'll, it'll trigger right when the scale happens. And I'll just call this rotate. And uh, we'll change these scale names to rotate and add that to the collection of animations and let's run it and see what all of these look like together. Goes down and you see there's the rotation and the scale. Back up and back over and fade out. And so that'll run forever um, based on how I define the group. And uh, this is really something that you can customize and tailor. I mean you could create a complex sequence of animations. Maybe your app does something when you load it or you log in, you, you log out, whatever. Um, you can do a lot of that fancy stuff inside of an animation group and then you can load up your group and just run that, right? And it's, it's just a combination of different things going on in here. So there's a lot of ways you can be creative in this and how it impacts your overall uh, user experience in your app. Just to summarize, uh, this is really another way to do 
exactly the same thing that we did in tutorial one. It's just this is using core animation directly. Um, and the benefit of this that I think is uh, nicer is that you can, you can kind of control things a little bit tighter outside of running things in blocks. Now, blocks are great and you can use those um, in certain situations, but if you, you really want to define like a custom animation group that's composed of you know these four or five things that have all these certain configurations that specify an animation, well you can create that group, you can control that in your code, and you can call it on the right at the right time to use it, and not have to have clunky blocks kind of filling up your your um, your methods in your code because you've already maybe constructed it once and you can just add it and remove it and it'll do its thing. So that's why I, I like you know interacting with the animations this way and it's a little bit more uh, lower to the API but again the blocks there's nothing wrong with the blocks based approach um, it's good for simple things but the more complicated you get you may want to consider um, diving into using some of the CA animations directly and that wraps up this lesson so hopefully you found this helpful and you can see opportunities in your app where you can apply this and where you can really add some special effects and make some cool animations that make your users want to come back and really promote your app and promote your brand so if you found this tutorial helpful you know what to do smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. Make sure to follow CodePro on social media. You can find me on Facebook and on Twitter. And let me know in the comments section down below if there's any special requests for animation tutorials in particular, because I am kind of diving into this whole uh, animation topic and any questions or requests that you guys have, um, I would definitely consider in creating future tutorial content going forward. Thank you so much for stopping by and I will catch you in the next one. Hey, if you made it this far, you should consider subscribing to CodePro. Press that red subscribe button down below to be notified for all my future tutorials and content. Also, make sure to check out my Patreon page. Patreon supporters receive early access to future tutorials, as well as access to source code for each YouTube tutorial, and access to my full-length iOS development courses.